If you are taking the SAT this weekend, or maybe in a few months, or even in a year, and you're looking for ways that you can on the sly very easily, very quickly improve your SAT math score, well, you've come to the right place, because what I'm gonna do today is go through some of my favorite SAT calculator hacks. As many of you know, there are now two sections of math on the new SAT, and one section forbids the use of calculators. So on that section, you can't use these hacks, boo. But on the other section, you can. And unlike the ACT, the SAT doesn't specify whether you can use calculator programs or anything like that. So the interpretation has been that you can use them because they haven't forbidden them, at least not as of, oh, April 2017 but you should always double check the rules because the rules are always subject to change and I don't wanna get you in trouble and you don't wanna get yourself in trouble either. So always make sure that you double check your rules. But as far as we know, these hacks are good to go. I use a TI-84. I think that's probably the most common calculator that most people are using. And so that's what I'm going to show you my hacks on. Before we get started, I just wanna remind everybody to subscribe to our channel and also go check out supertutortv.com. If you go to supertutortv.com slash subscribe, you can subscribe to our mailing list and keep up to date on everything awesome and new here at Super Tutor TV. Cool. And without further ado, let's get into this. Hack number one, the frack key. Frack is basically a wonderful little thing you can press on your calculator that will turn any answer that is in decimal form into fraction form if it can be expressed as a fraction. So I'm gonna show you a problem really quickly that this could come up on and how to do it. So let's say we just have to add a couple of fractions together. Let's say we have to add one half plus two fifths plus four sevenths, okay? kind of ugly because you got a two, a five, and a seven, that's gonna make for a really big, ugly, least common denominator. But my calculator can do all the work for you, all the heavy lifting for you. But here's the problem that students run into. A lot of times, all the answer choices are in fraction form. And what happens when you do this in your calculator is you get a decimal answer choice, and that's not what you want. Well, that's where this frac function comes to the rescue, and here's how it works. You go to the math key, which is one, two down from your second key right there, and if you click on that, you're gonna see frac, which has a little arrow next to it at number one. If for some reason you're not in the right place, you can click the one button or you can arrow up to it, and then you just press enter, and then what it does is it converts your answer into a fraction. So we see this as 103 over 70 and boom, it shows it to you in a fraction form. And how awesome is that? Now you can also do this to decimal form. If for some reason you have something in a fraction and you wanna turn it back to decimal, that's dec, which is right under that. You'll see frac and then you see des, like decimal. So really cool, really easy, neat, fun, awesome trick if you didn't know it, frac. Okay, number two, my next calculator hack is actually programs. It's actually three programs that I'm gonna point out. If you haven't already watched it, I recommend that you go watch my video on how to download programs for your TI-84 calculator, if this is the calculator that you have. That's the best place for you to start with this. Just a little update to that video. That video was made a couple of years ago. I will warn you that the programs have changed a little bit. And now that there's a color edition, TI has actually rolled out two different versions of their calculator software. So just make sure that you have the right version of the calculator software. The other thing I'm gonna say is that I know some students have experienced compatibility issues with their particular operating system on their computer. If you happen to have issues on your computer, getting the calculator to load or getting the programs to load on the calculator, I have a couple pieces of advice to you. One, make sure that your operating system is up to date. Two, make sure that you have the right version of the software from TI. And three, you can also double check your USB cable. Sometimes if you're using a super old USB cable, it may not work. And finally, four, if none of that works, go try mom or dad's computer or go try to find another computer or your friend's computer and see if that works a little bit better, a computer at school or something like that. It is well worth it if you can get these programs on your calculator because they are awesome. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the programs that I recommend. First is quadratic equation. In terms of tracking down a quadratic equation program, if you go to a website called tiCalc.org, you're going to find tons and tons of freely downloadable programs that random people have written and uploaded to the internet, and I guarantee there will be a ton of different options for you for quadratic equations. And here's why we use the quadratic equation. One, you can really quickly factor stuff. So let's say you need to get something in factored form for some reason. Factoring can be annoying, it can take a long time, 
but the quadratic equation, when it's in your calculator, it can solve down a quadratic really super fast, okay? Most of the time, these come in the form of just ax squared plus bx plus c form. They're gonna factor that down. So let's say we had x squared minus 5x plus 4, okay? So then my a would be 1, my b would be negative 5, and my c would be 4. And you can see how this can solve it down in, a, in boom, millisecond. And I get x equals 4, x equals 1. And that means factored form would be x minus 4 times x minus 1. See how easy that is? The other reason that the quadratic equation program is really helpful is sometimes on the SAT you need to find zeros of a quadratic and it will really quickly find those zeros. Sometimes we have what I call function as a model problems. Those could be word problems that involve a parabola of some sort. When you see like an x squared term in some sort of word problem and they're asking you when blah, blah, blah equals zero, what does that mean or, or whatever? A lot of times I can use the quadratic equation on my calculator to very quickly figure out what the zeros are if it's not in vertex form or factored form. And then that can give me information about when my height equals zero or when my y value equals zero. And I can kind of think that through and gather some more information. So it's also very useful on problems like that. But in any case, a quadratic equation solver, it's a really good thing to have because it just makes your life way freaking easier, okay? The second kind of program that I really love to have on the SAT is a system of equations with two unknowns. I always like to have an equation solver that can solve that out. And the format of this particular situation is always going to be your ax plus by equals c. And then you have like dx plus ey equals f. Does that kind of make sense to you guys? So essentially what you have is two equations in standard form and two unknowns. What I mean by two unknowns is you've got two variables and then you need to solve out the one place when one of those variables equals one thing and another one of those variables equals another thing and those two are equal to each other, okay? The one that I happen to have, which I know I've talked about in my other video, is Alvados. So this is this fun program by Sam Hund. It has a two variable equation solver. I really like these for like those kind of dopey word problems that are usually on the easier part of the test. So here we go. This is what this is gonna do. You see how I've got like two equations there. And my two unknowns are x and y. And what the a, the b, and the c are, the a and the b are just coefficients, right? So let's say we had a problem that said five adult tickets and two children's tickets cost $18, okay? And then we have another sentence that says three adult tickets and four children's tickets cost $16. How much does an adult ticket cost? Well, an adult ticket costs $2.85 approximately, or $2.86. Why do we need this? Well, this is not brain surgery to solve down, but it's the kind of thing that people often make careless errors in doing. So, being able to do it in your calculator totally saves you on careless errors. It also is pretty darn fast. The third thing that I use constantly on the SAT is a slope intercept form equation creator that can from two points create the slope intercept form of a line or from two points find the slope. So what I like is a, a program that's gonna take two points. So you see here I've got x1, y1 and x2, y2 is what it's prompting me for. If I give it two points, can it give me the slope? And can it give me the slope intercept form of the line? This is just super handy. And when do I use this? Well, obviously I use it on problems when they give you two points and they say, what's the slope of the line? I use it on problems when they say, here's two points that are on this line, which of the following graphs could this line be? I also use it when we have line of best fit kind of things. And also, even if you don't have the slope intercept formula line, if you just have the slope formula, that's like a huge help. So again, I'm just gonna make up some points here, five, negative six. 3 comma 4. So there you go. Negative 5x plus 19. That's what I get. And so negative 5 is the slope. You see how it gives you the slope and the y-intercept and boom. And it even has like a little button that you can press for the fraction. So those are the three programs that I use the most often on the SAT. They just add accuracy. They make everything easier. They give you a little bit of a speed bump. 
as you're working through the problems on the test. So definitely recommend gearing up with some programs. My next calculator hack is just kind of a common sense idea, which is use graphing to solve systems of complex equations or quadratics or graphing problems that you're stuck on. So what I mean by this is remember that you always have this graphing calculator. So if they give you an equation and they say, which of the following is a graph of this equation, guess what? Your calculator can do that for you. Now, I know I showed you this linear equation solver. And so that's what I'm going to use when I have two linear equations. But sometimes you don't have linear equations. Sometimes you have funky equations. That funky equation could be an absolute value equation, right? You can graph absolute value equations. You can even graph inequalities. You could graph absolute value inequalities. You could graph parabolas. You could graph ellipses. You can graph all sorts of things on this. And you can find intersection points on this that you're not going to be able to find with that linear equation solver because sometimes what you're graphing or what you're considering isn't linear. So particularly when I have problems that are dealing with non-linear situations, this is my best friend for trying to solve for intersection points if you ever have to do that. Is it always the fastest way to do it? No. Sometimes it's a really slow way to do it, but it's an accurate way to do it. And finally, the last calculator hack is remember that your calculator has every trigonometric value in the world in it. So if you ever get stuck on a trig problem or you can't remember the trigonometric identity or something like that, remember you can always kind of just like hack it out with this. So if they say sine of x equals root 3 over 2, well, gosh, you can solve for x, right? You can do sine negative 1 of root 3 over 2, and that's going to tell you that x equals 60 degrees. So then if the problem asks you, what is the cosine of 90 minus x? Well, that's the cosine of 30, isn't it? Okay, so the cosine of 30, how do I solve for the cosine of 30? Well, I can put that back in my calculator too. Now, sometimes you're going to get values here that don't match your values here because it's going to have root twos, root threes, things like that. But remember, this can solve all that out too. So you can back solve, you can match things up, you can make it work. But bottom line is there's no reason to ever get completely stuck on a trig problem because your calculator knows every trig value ever known to man. If need be, you might need to make some things up, make up some numbers if there's variables in the answer choices or something like that. But heck, really smart guy, this calculator. And it can help you out if you've totally spaced or don't know what to do or feel stuck. Cool. Hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't and go check out our social media as well as our other videos. I will see you guys next time and good luck on your SAT if you're taking it soon. Bye-bye.